stars. Let me see what spring is like. Hello, Core Hounds. John here from Core. And today is the day. It's a big day. It's a day I've been waiting for, to be completely honest with you. Today, we are taking a look at our Tannis. Now, here's the deal. I've been wanting to do a getting started on Artanis for a while, but we kept hearing about, oh, he's about to get some big fixes and some big changes, and then we got those, and then it was, well, that's not quite enough. He needs some new mobility options, and then we waited for that. Well, now we finally have it. We finally have everything we've asked for for Artanis, and while I won't say that they'll never change him again, I feel confident that I can at least put out this uh, this little getting started video. So let's dive right into it, and again, as I always say, week after week, keep in mind this is not the definitive guide to Artanis. This is simply a starting point to get you comfortable enough with the character to where you're willing to go in, give him a try, and then start maybe your own quick matches or versus AI with him feeling a little more confident than maybe you might otherwise. Uh, let's dive right into the build that I'm going to use for Artanis this time around. Uh, this build is specifically designed to really help Artanis tank and be shieldy and be difficult to kill. Uh, it's not a super high damage build, which I've done in the past. We're mostly going to be focused on keeping Artanis alive longer. So, to do that, we're going to start with reactive parry. Makes sense, give him some block. If you are going up against a very mage or ability heavy comp, you may want to substitute that, um, but we'll start there. So, at the next level, level 4, uh, we're looking at shield battery, which reduces shield overloads cooldown by 8 seconds if it lasts the full duration. Uh, lethal Alacrity increases Blade Dash's range and speed. Chrono Surge, hitting an enemy hero with Phase Prism grants 40% bonus attack speed for 4 seconds. And Templar Zeal, Blade Dash cooldown recharges 100% faster while you are below 50% health. We're going to go ahead and take Templar Zeal. Level 7, Warp Sickness. Phase Prism also slows enemies' movement speed. Solarite Reaper increases the damage of the first dash of Blade Dash by 150%. Psionic Synergy, every time Blade Dash hits an enemy hero, it reduces Shield Overload's cooldown by 4 seconds. And follow through after using an ability, your next basic attack within 6 seconds deals 40% additional damage. We're taking Psionic Synergy. Uh, so... The reason I've kind of read through and, and shown you what we're doing here uh, with this is because we're taking a very kind of backseated road. That doesn't make sense. We're taking a back road to enhancing his shield. So what we took is we took an ability that lowers Blade Dash's cooldown. Doesn't seem like a very defensive ability, but we then took an ability that when we use that, it reduces the cooldown on shield overload. So by being able to cast Blade Dash more, we effectively reduce the cooldown of shield overload more. So you can see it's kind of a double step to get there, but it works into becoming a very defensive talent. Um, just in case any of you were wondering why I didn't take some more overtly defensive talents up to this point. For his ultimate, uh, this is a bit of a grab bag. Um, I am still a huge fan of Purifier Beam, and it works out quite well. In a world full of Tracers and Rainers and Valas and things that like to get in and hit you, Suppression Pulse can be very, very effective as well. Um, both of them, very good choices. For the purposes of this video, we're going to go ahead and just take Suppression Pulse. All right. Now we're getting into it. So, level 13. I have actually always been, secretly, a big fan of Burning Rage. Um, used to take it a lot, might still even consider it for a attack-focused build, but we're not taking it here. 
Uh, Graviton Vortex. Phase Prism pulls, damages additional enemy hero along with the first. Triple Strike. Uh, we know what this is. This used to be the go-to pick until they added that additional cooldown um, added by one second. And the other one, when Shield Overload activates, you take 50% less damage from abilities for four seconds. So... Here's where we get into a little bit of a conundrum. We're going to be focusing primarily on these top two talents. So let's look at what the actual tooltip for Shield Overload says. You, if you take damage while below 50% health, you gain a 985 point shield for 5 seconds. Your basic attacks lower the cooldown of Shield Overload by 4 seconds. Now when you use twin blades your next basic attack immediately causes you to charge a short distance and strike the enemy two times which means these count as basic attacks which means this technically lowers the shield overload cooldown however this phase bulwark is also a pretty significant buff to your defenses so we're going to take triple strike in this video, but keep in mind if you are against a very ability heavy team, and maybe even in general, strongly consider phase bulwark. It's very, very good. Um, and there is nothing, nothing wrong with taking it because, hey, if you're taking 50% less damage, you're going to significantly reduce the effectiveness of a lot of heavy hitting characters. Um, I'm taking triple strike in this video but honestly, again, it's kind of a toss-up between the two, and that nerf to triple strike really, really hurts to some degree. Level 16, where we used to always pick Zealot Charge. Uh, this one is now a much more fun talent to play in, and you can certainly pick a bunch of different things depending on what you're going to do. But we are going to take Shield Surge. Again, we are focusing... Uh, much higher on buffing his shields and his ability to stay in and take a beating and shield surge is going to just grant an insane amount of shielding for artanis and then finally uh for this we're not going to upgrade our ultimate or nexus blades uh we're going to take a look at force of will increases shield overloads cooldown reduction from basic attacks to six seconds this is going to give him even more shields, shields for days. So let's go ahead and toggle minions, and we'll go ahead and take a look at how he plays now that we've got the build all put together. So the first thing that you're going to notice is we now have a 50% bake-in on our Zealot charge. What that means is it used to be you would have to pick a talent in order to close in. Now, when we hit W, you can see the little dots surrounding him. If an enemy is within that range and I right-click him, he will dash to them and hit them three times. So, it's pretty effective if they're trying to escape. You just get within range, and you'll see Artanis zip in and start smacking him down. Now we're starting to see the shielding. You can see Artanis is below 50% health. That means he's starting to get these shields popped. He's starting to do more damage. It's keeping the cooldown down. And it allows him to stay in the fight a lot longer. Now, you'll notice, being in this fight longer, doing all this damage, it's very scary to play Artanis because you're basically playing at 50% health at this point in the game. And you can also tell he's not a super heavy hitter as far as damage is concerned. Um, I'm not doing a ton of damage to Arthas, and once those shields expire, foom, they are gone. Uh, and you are right back where you started. But, it's okay, because he can go flying right back in, and as soon as he starts taking some more damage, we will just get right back into it. Now, you do want to consider timing your abilities a little bit to try and maximize your shields. Um, you know, the warp dash isn't going to get you any benefits if you're not... Uh, 
if you're not actually waiting for your shields to recharge. But you can see, even standing right here in the middle of everything and getting cannon shots, just how tanky Artanis has become. Because he's kind of, eh, I don't care. I don't care about your cannons. I don't really care about you, Arthas. I'm just coming here. I'll take cannon shots. I'll get zapped by things. Whatever. It's all good. I'm Artanis. Um, and it lets you play this super hyper-aggressive character even though it doesn't feel like you should. Because again, I'm at 50% health through almost all of this. You can use your uh, blade dash to kind of push out the amount of time when you're sitting there thinking, oh man, that shield isn't on cooldown. You can kind of stall it out by doing your blade dash at that point. And you want to just stay in the fight, constantly put on um, pressure. Constantly do damage if you want to throw down your ult in the middle of it. There we go. It's like chopping down a tree with a piece of wood in Minecraft it takes so long. But again, we're not playing Artanis because, oh, we want the most high damage character in the world. We certainly can spec him into being more damagey, but that's not the point. And so look, here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to stay in longer than I should, and actually it's probably going to even kill him. But you can see, even in the midst with no allies around, with Arthas hitting him, being at 50% health, and taking shots from a tower, Artanis can take a real beating in this game right now without it being a problem. He just needs to kind of hit that magical, he's now below half health level. Um, so let's talk about his other ability for a moment. Let's kind of get out of here and let's talk about his phase prism. Because Phase Prism is a key to playing Artha, or not Arthas, Artanis. I need to say who I'm playing, not what I'm reading. So, with Artanis, one of the biggest things that you're going to need to master, skill-wise, is the ability to do an effective Phase Prism, which is what I did right there. Because nothing is going to foil your enemies more than... A big old phase prism dropping on them right when they don't want it to. Let's see if we can get Arthas to run again. We'll show it again. The important thing is that you learn how fast it moves so you can aim it effectively um, because you need to lead the target a little bit with it. You need to kind of anticipate where they're going to be. And I would highly recommend maybe getting yourself in a practice mode like this so you can get good at it. You can see there was a whiff. I thought Arthas was going to go one way. He went another. Um, it can be very difficult to land. And as fun as it would be to do a swap through walls, he also can't do that. But you can see right there, this is going to be a takedown on Arthas, and it was caused by using an effective phase prism. By shooting that out and uh, swapping places with Arthas right within the cannon fire of the gates, it allows Artanis to do some significant damage to Arthas unintentionally. You know, make the turrets do it for him. Um, you can see it has a very, very limited range, uh, but it does only work on heroes, so you can feel okay shooting it through minions like this. You don't have to worry, oh man, it's going to hit minions, I need to aim around it, stuff like that. And you just really want to use it to ruin your enemy's day. Put them in the middle of your team, put them in a position they're not going to want to be in. Um, when they're trying to get away, you can do a big swap with them. 
Um, and you can also use it to assist your attack. So let's pretend for a moment that Arthas has a bunch of allies behind him helping. Well, we can swap. I can move forward. My back line can deal with Arthas, and I can stomp forward and start keeping other people out over here. Um, that, of course, assumes that my back line is able to deal with Arthas. Defensively, if Arthas is attacking something I don't want, we can swap him back and get away. So... It is the most important skill that an Artanis player can really master. Um, as you can see, his ultimates have global range, so this actually applies to both uh, this one, Suppression Pulse, and uh, his Spear of a Dune laser. Um, we can fire it from anywhere. So let's say you decided, well, I need to hearth back, you're gonna leave but you know your team is still going to have to be fighting and dealing with Arthas. You're back here. They're about to have a big team fight. You can assist them by having that go off from across the map before you even get out there. So make sure you use those effectively. Um, it is much easier to hit with this one than it is the, the laser. Suppression pulse is a little easier. You can see it doesn't have much of a cooldown. Uh, there's not a ton of time to get out of it. There's a little bit. Um, but it is super effective against high damaging melee characters. And right now, with the popularity of characters like Tracer and Illidan, uh, Vala, Raynor, all of them, it's going to do you a lot of good to have that ability you know, to be familiar with that ability and have blinds available, because blinds are what really does work on those characters. So that's really it for Artanis. The The big thing that you want to focus on with Artanis is just dealing as much damage to your enemies as possible, keeping your shields up, controlling the battlefield, and understand that there's really no escape. If Artanis gets in here and he's hitting a building and he gets into trouble, there's really no getting away for him. He's kind of in the fight. And that's one thing that your allies and you are going to have to understand when you play with Artanis is that there's really no easy way for him to get out. When he wants to leave a fight, he has to kind of slow march his way out of a fight. Um, but that's okay because he's a shield master and he's awesome. So I hope this gets you just the bare bones basics with Artanis so you'll give him a try. He's super tanky, he's super skilled, and uh, I hope you give him a go. Until next time, this has been John from Core uh, for Iron.